Hey guys, my name is Tomud, and on here we do these kinds of things. Uh, but today we're going to look at uh, working with a uh, track that's off tempo. So you might have either recorded this uh, as just free tempo without a click, or uh, uh, other uses is uh, if you want to transcribe something. So say you have a soundtrack file or a, a, a song and you want to uh, recreate it in your DAW and it's not on tempo. So for film scores, that's quite usual. Uh, so um, Cubase has some neat tricks that helps us with creating a grid once we actually tell it where the quarter notes uh, will be. So right here, I have some notes that I've played in that are not played on tempo. Let's just have a quick listen to that. Okay, great. So uh, for those of you wondering, that is simply a unicorda with some settings coupled with a uh, Oliver Arnold's uh, felt piano uh, sent into a eventide black hole. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually bounce this out. We're going to mess things up if we keep this as MIDI. So I've already done that. So let's mute the MIDI piano and open up the audio piano. All right, so here it is. And I've normalized it as well. So it's a little louder. Beautiful. OK, so we've got this. And just to show you. is completely off tempo. So the first thing we're going to do is actually align it to uh, a beat. So I'm going to catch the first transient right there and cut it by clicking Alt X or Option X. So we're starting at bar seven. Uh, if we want to start it at bar one, we can do so pretty easily change this to grid relative and off we go bar one. All right, next thing we're going to do is actually add an instrument track, a an empty contact instance, and we're going to drag in a click file. There you go. Beautiful. It's pretty much a matter of just playing the quarter note in right now. So let me do that. So I added in uh, a bar of 4-4 four, four at the end here. I'll need to remember that. Uh, the rest of the piece is in 3. So I guess the next point of reference would be to uh, go through and uh, move a couple of notes that uh, aren't in the right spot. So let's just have a listen, and I'll do that off stream. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I've nudged the different quarter notes a little to the right, a little to the left, so that they fit uh, even better. Uh, depending on how I would use this, I, I, I wouldn't spend as much time as I have. We're going to be pretty close uh, right now. If you wanted to be super, super detailed, you could even do eighth notes, I think. Or if you just want to get the idea of a tempo, you could do uh, whole bars. I'll show you. So we've placed this at bar number one. We have a MIDI region with the quarter notes and uh, we need two more things now. We need a signature track and we need a tempo track just to see what we're going to be dealing with. Um, I guess we could place this uh, somewhere around 60, uh, but that's going to move the MIDI region um, according to the, the audio. So if you want to do that, uh, you'll see what I mean. This, this guy will kind of poke out, but we can deal with that later. Okay, we have all the stuff we need. I'm going to hold off on doing a uh, signature right here. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select the MIDI region. I'm going to go to mid the MIDI menu, functions, and then merge tempo from tapping. This dialog box is going to appear and we can select one bar, two bar, eighth notes, half notes or quarter notes. Since I played quarter notes, I'm going to select quarter notes and I'm also going to select begin at bar start. That is going to add a tempo data point uh, at the beginning of the bar. So we definitely want that because we don't want the first quarter note to be in 120. Let's hit OK. And look what it's done. Uh, to see this better, we can open up the tempo track editor. Uh, Control T opens that. And look at this. So every quarter note, we have a new tempo. And if we now mute our own click, turn on the click of the door and play this through, I am going to add a signature right here that says three, four, and then we're just going to play it through. Beautiful. And at the end, we're back to four, four, or three, four, probably. So I added in uh, for the tempo, um, I added in a couple of extra notes. Um, this is probably how I would have notated it. So I'm using uh, time signature as well as going up and down in tempo to uh, create this flow uh, in while I'm, I'm playing. And this is what I would have notated it as. So add a quarter note right here. I'm just going to play that for you. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and so on. And for the end, One, two, three, four, five, and one, two. Okay. 
obviously this tempo at the end would not be 120. So let's add something like this. Something around there. Okay, a couple of things. If I were to play this MIDI part right now, it would be off tempo because I did not play it in uh, on the old grid. It was not in tempo at all. So if I play this right now, it's not going to have any value for us anymore. Um, so I probably would uh, just delete it from the project uh, and from here I could add in a new um, instrument, maybe string something, uh, and then play with the tempo of the door and jump to the different bars. I can jump to bar nine uh, and I can work with uh, all, all of the, I could work with delays. I could work with uh, quantizing a little bit. Uh, and it's really helpful just to have uh, markers uh, appear in the right spots uh, when you're looping stuff. It's, it's really easy uh, to do this and uh, it helps, uh, helps you use the strengths of your DAW um, when working with it. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll uh, be back with a new tip very soon. See you then.